In this video I will show you how you can build an internet bandwidth monitor out of three 8x8 LED matrices. So stay tuned. So what is this all about, you may ask? I came up with the idea to build an internet bandwidth monitor just to see what's going on with my internet connection. And as I had this little board lying around together with these uh, three matrices, I decided to use them for my project. What it basically does. On the left it shows how much data is coming from the internet to my local network and on the right hand side it shows how much data is going out. In between it shows what are the current limits and by limits I mean the range where this scale operates at. So for example if the display tells you the current limit for down is 6 Mbit and the lights on the left hand side would lit to the top then you would be consuming 6 Mbit down. These limits are assigned dynamically and they depend on how much is going on on your connection right now. This was implemented to keep the display more active over the time. Let's dig into the hardware part of it. I decided to use this ESP8266 board for this project. That is actually a pretty cool thing I think. Because it's very cheap, it is around 6 or 7 euros at the moment. It brings built-in Wi-Fi which is great for this purpose and has a lot of I.O. pins and last but not least a large memory. This makes it easy to include uh, the libraries you need for this and you don't have to worry that your application gets too large. The board is connected to the display by just 5 cables. Two of them are power and the others are data in, chip select and the clock. And then this is all connected to this set of LED matrices. They use a MAX7219 chip, which is great because you could add a lot of more of these displays if you like to. In that case you may need an external power supply for this. But for just three of them the power coming from the board is quite okay for this project. Yeah, I think that's it for the hardware part, which is not too complicated on this project. So let's uh, dig into the software part of it. Alright, and here we go. What you see here is the basic Arduino IDE, just in a dark color theme. To get the ESP8266 running you need to add an additional boards manager URL. If you already have that you can skip this step now. After adding the URL in the preferences tab, we can now open the boards manager and search for the ESP8266 library. Just hit install and wait a moment. After the installation is complete, you should see a whole bunch of new boards in your boards list. I'll choose the Node MCU1 board, but that depends on which board you actually have. Next, we need to add some more libraries. We are going to add the Adafruit GFX library and we are going to install required dependencies also. To work with the Max7219, we need another library. Unfortunately, the one I chose is not available via the Manage Libraries tab. But that is no problem at all, we just download it ourselves. After you have downloaded the file, you just need to put it in your Arduino Libraries folder. Where this is depends on the system you're using, but I guess you figured it out yourself. And that's it, we should now be able to build our app. For this we just hit the verify button in the Arduino ID. And if your console outputs something like this, you are ready to roll. So let's run over the actual code. I will not go into each and every detail of the code, but I'll give you a brief overview of what is going on here. Starting at the top you will see a little commentary explaining how to connect your ESP8266 board to your LED matrix. We already covered that in the beginning of this video, but here is a little reminder of that. Below that we see our includes of the libraries we are using. And we start with the configuration. Next is the 
Wi-Fi SSID and the Wi-Fi password. Here you have to add your configuration to access your local Wi-Fi. Next is some image data in a maybe a little bit strange format. This comes from a very handy tool actually. It's an online editor, especially for these type of LED mattresses. It enables you to design your animations in a what you see is what you get manner. And you can simply copy the results afterwards directly into your code. And that is where this particular data comes from. Next is a bunch of runtime variables where we store our current limits, the current bandwidth limit, which have an effect on the scale of our LED tree. In the setup function, we basically set up our serial and configure our matrix. We have the ability to set the intensity of the brightness. Here it's just set to 1. We initialize the Wi-Fi and inform the user if we are connected. And after that, we'll display our little scanner animation. If you are a child of the 80s or 90s, you may have an idea where I got my inspiration for this. If not, the name of the method may help you a bit. Yeah, it's a bit nerdy, I think. It's okay. So far for the setup, let's switch to the main loop. This is separated into four main blocks. In the first block we check if there is input from the serial and if so we try to handle it. There are actually three commands and they are basically for debugging. The first is called ST and stands for show text. You can add some messages if you like to. The second is KIT or KITT if you prefer, which runs the little animation again. And RA resets a counter. More on that later. Back to the main loop and to the scroll text. This part of the code looks for any text to display. Text can come from the serial I just showed you or from other parts of the program. And then it's time for the main attraction, the traffic monitor. This is, I guess, the most interesting part of the program. And to be perfectly honest with you, there are some requirements. And that is basically your router and the support to access internet connection information. My router, found under this local IP, actually offers this information. The retrieval is a bit complicated actually. You have to call a so-called SOAP action, offer some information in the header and stuff like that. And in the result you will get an XML document, what you have to parse. So this part of the code can only be for reference or inspiration, if you are not using a Fritzbox. These Fritzbox routers are pretty common here in Germany and in Europe, but I'm not so sure if they are sold in the US that much as well. So you may have to extend the code to your needs and this very part. But heading on with the code. We grab our information for download speed and upload speed from the response we just got. Actually this is a bit hacky in a way, but it works and as you have to modify the code probably, it's it's okay to cheat here a bit. We put the results to draw transfer rates and let the magic happen. This function is responsible for actually two things. One thing is write the new limits if there are some, saying the new limit is let's say 6 mbit or something. For down or up, and if you are within the limits of the current scale, it is also responsible to redraw the dots you will see on the LED matrix. And back on top in the main loop, there is this last block, which is just a counter for lowering the limits. That is a part I'm not 100% happy with, it's just there to lower the limits and to adjust the scale. If there was traffic on your connection and there is not so much traffic anymore. Without this, the display would get stuck a bit. But yeah, the way it's implemented is not so cool, but maybe you have a better idea on this. Yeah, and that's it actually. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked the idea as much as I do. If so, there is always the chance for a like or even a subscription. Thank you very much and see you next time. Thank you.